All right, Shalom. This is a hard one by Yasha Allah from the Lions Den Camp. I want to say, Kal Halayim, Layahawa, by Hashem Yahweh by Hashem Harakar Kodash, Ma'amaf. The line to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. Shalom to you, Akim, Nagwatim, and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Uh, yeah, um, I want to do a little impromptu real quick on um, 2 Peter 1 and 1. Uh, chapter one and uh kind of vibe in the spirit. Uh this is um second Peter chapter one verse one. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. All right. Now to be an apostle, um it basically means to be what? Um a delegate or an ambassador uh, an ambassador or one sent forth with with orders, right? Or sent away. Okay. So now um it says wow. It says officially officially a commissioner of Yahweh Shai, an apostle with miraculous powers. All right. So now um and this was talking about Simon Peter at the time. Um and it says what? Apostle of Yahweh Shai, uh to, to them that have obtained like precious faith. And this, this faith is precious being in this truth. As you can see, man, as we get closer to the end, you see how precious precious it is. You know, because um only few can understand this truth that are that are sealed or being sealed, you know, or predestined. To be in this faith and it's precious. Let's see what the word precious means. Uh, it says, of equal value or honor, equally precious, equally honored to be esteemed equal to. All right, so they have obtained like precious faith, man. So the same faith that we've obtained, obtained to. It's the same faith that Peter and Paul and the rest of the apostles, the, the disciples, obtained to, all right? The faith in Yahweh Shah. That he's going to deliver us uh, from the coming judgment. And that he exists. And that Yahweh exists. And that Yahweh raised him from the dead. And that he's able to do and accomplish everything that he said he's able to do. All right? It says, uh, <clears throat> that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of Yahweh and uh, and our Savior, Yahweh Shai and Mashiach, through Yahweh's righteous judgment and uh, teaching and, and giving the te testimony uh, righteously in the right way. All right. Verse 2 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of Yahweh. That is, through the knowing and being in this truth is going to what? Multiply grace unto the elect, the hopeful elect. And that's that feeling you, you feel being in this truth, the excitement. It says graciousness, the fact that you, you can even understand in, in uh, this word is uh, part of that grace. That grace period. I was just talking to a brother of a day, yeah. Um, you know, Yakanan, it means what? Grace. All right, grace of Yahweh. And that's when it really started, when the, the Lord was showing his grace and uh, bringing us unto repentance, returning the hearts of the, um, the children unto the fathers and the fathers unto the children. What thus you have? Apostles. All right, and then Yahweh Shai, um, uh, came to uh, what set the foundation for that. <clears throat> so it's what, what grace, graciousness of gratifying or of manner of of act, abstract or concrete, literally, uh, spiritually, especially the the divine influence upon the heart. Right, the divine influence upon your mind, your spirit. 
Right, that's that spirit you've been you've been feeling, the spirit of truth. It's the Lord uh building you up. And it's reflection in the life. So you know, uh was this faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. All right. Including gratitude. All right, that which affords joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, loving loveliness. Grace of speech, goodwill, loving kindness, favor. All right. The the spiritual condition of one governed by the power of divine grace, a token or proof of grace, a benefit, man. So this is a token. Uh, be, being in this truth is a token of the kingdom. All right. This is Second Thessalonians one and uh, four. And it says, um, actually, three, we are bound to thank Yahweh always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly in charity, in the charity of every one of you, all toward each other aboundeth. All right, that's the word charity. Okay, charity is what? Doing this work. It says, what? Love. Love. All right, affection. Or benevolence, especially plural, brotherly love, affection, goodwill. All right, the love feast, and that's this is the love feast doing his work. All right, I'm gonna read that again. It says, "We are bound to thank Yahweh always for for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you." All toward each other aboundeth. All right. So the charity meaning what? Doing his work. So agape, the love feast. And um, that's that's what this is, man. That's love going out and doing his work. All right. It says, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches. All right. Churches means to be what? All right, um, the Greek word ecclesia, G1577, it means to a calling out. All right, so the, just like the, um, the word masha, which means to be drawn from the waters. So the elect are called out from the world. Okay, John 15 and 19, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, the world hateth you. All right, to be chosen, to be called out. All right, right here, Matthew 22 and 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. So even though there's going to be many called out from Israel, just like Ezekiel, uh, uh, what's that, 37? It speaks about the job, the job bones, you know. But it, it's going to be a lot of the, um, the job bones that don't have breath, so they're not going to have this truth. All right, the spirit of truth. All right, so the Lord has called us out from amongst the world, and that's the church. All right, Second Thessalonians one. And uh, what was that? Okay, four, and four. It says, "So that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of Yahweh, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure." All right. So that's our our goal is what to get to these persecutions, being persecuted, hotly pursued, or all our hot pursuits that we're on. And the Lord said, what? Um, it, it takes patience being in this work. All right. And being persecuted. Matter of fact. All right. This is Matthew 5 and uh, 5 and 9. Blessed are the peacemakers. 
for they shall be called the children of Yahweh. All right, so blessed are the peacemakers. Now, um, the peacemakers are those that go out and do the work and bring uh, the children back to the Father that's making peace. Peace between Yahweh and his children. All right. It says, uh, verse 10, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. All right, so being physically, verb verbally attacked, you know, to be persecuted for this truth. Blessed are those that are persecuted or scoffed at, you know, or demonized uh, by the wicked. All right, First Thessalon Second Thessalonians 1 and, uh, I'm sorry from, uh, where was that? Verse four again. So that you, so that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches, all right, in the elect, the what they call it, the gathering of Yahweh for our, for your patience and and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations. All right, that ye endure. It says what? Tribulation means pressure. A pressing, a pressing together. Pressure, basically affliction, right? Metaphor. Oppression. Affliction, tribulation, distress, straits. The straits, man. Going through the affliction. All right? Matter of fact, all right, so what's that? Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh. All right, what's mercy? Mercy is uh, giving someone a gift for something they don't deserve. That's mercy. All right, when, and the gift that he's given us is what? Salvation. And it's truth. And we don't deserve it. And being in this work, this is... Um, that we that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. So that's what these bodies are here for. All right, present it as a living sacrifice. Just like um, the Lord told Abraham to present uh, his son as a living sacrifice. But what did the do? What did the Lord do at the end? He sent the angel to stop him. And he said, "Yo, I've already provided." A lamb for you. So that that was spiritual talking about these times. Yahweh Shai is that lamb. So even though we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, Yahweh, there's no greater sacrifice than what Yahweh Shai did. All right, and He want us to do that in the same resemblance, laying down our life. You know, but we're not gonna have to um, die in the sense He said we should not all die. Where would you all be changed? All right. He said, those that lose their life for his sake, they're going to find it. All right. So um, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, meaning what? Keeping the laws to the best of your ability unto Yahweh which is your reasonable service. It says, and be not conformed to this world. See, that's the, that's the church, the calling out from the world, being separated. But be ye transformed, all right? And say, once you come into this truth, you become a new creature. So you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind, being refreshed, man, renewed. That's New Jerusalem right there, being renewed. That ye may prove that uh, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh. 
All right, so let's get back to Second Peter 1. It says Simon or Simeon, Peter, right? Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle, meaning to be what? Sent out. All right. Of Yahweh Shai, to them that have obtained the like precious faith uh, with us through the righteousness of Yahweh and our Savior, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach. So the Lord judged specifically who you want to give the spirit to, man. Righteous judgment, predestination. Verse 2, grace and peace, man. All right, so the Lord is giving us grace right now. We're in a time of grace. All right, so every time, that's why the Lord sent John, Yachanan. We're in a time of that, that grace being given. Okay, and the spirit of Yahweh shot. Let's see, it says graciousness, a grat as gratifying of manner or act, abstract or concrete, figuratively or spiritual, influence upon the heart and its reflection in life, all right, including gratitude. Okay, so, and peace, what's uh, peace? All right, peace of scripture say, uh, it says a state of national tranquility. Wow, man. So the elect are in a state of peace scattered around the four corners of the earth. Peace in our minds with the Father and a uh, spirit of hope. That's that's creating a nation right there. That's New Jerusalem, renewed, refreshed, or right, renewing their minds. Peace between individuals, so peace amongst the uh, the hopeful elect, men, women, and children. And this truth, man, not um, that's why scriptures say, "How can two walk together except they be agreed?" If they be agreed, then they have peace. There's no confliction there. All right. So it says security, safety. And being in this truth is safety. All right. This is Psalms 12 and 5. For the oppression of the poor. This is Esau. All right. They've been oppressing the poor. The poor is Israel. For the sighing of the needy. Now will I arise. Say if Yahweh, I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. All right. Who's puffing at us? Is uh, Esau. All right. So he's going to set us in safety. That's salvation. All right. That's what salvation means to be moved out of the way of a trap that's being set for you. So you're going to set the elect in safety. At the moment, um, see, we present our bodies, these bodies that we are in, the Spirit presents it as a living sacrifice to Yahweh. That, that, that goes into the parable of the ten virgins going out to meet him. Proverbs chapter 1, you know, wisdom cried without in the, in the streets. So we're being what? Called, you know, an apostolized man being sent out. All right. Because that's that re, re, the, the, um, returning the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children returning the heart. Uh, returning the hearts of the children to the father. All right. Those fathers being the apostles, the forefathers, the elect. All right. And uh, calling out to the church, <clears throat> the, uh, the rest of Israel. So now it says, verse two, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. So being in this truth, that's what you're going to get multiplied in the grace. The influence upon your heart, your mind, and peace, man. All right. It's going to be multiplied. <clears throat> um, all right, cool. So safety, security. Wow, man. All the way up until Psalms 91. 
where the Lord gonna give his angels charge over thee. It says, be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of Yahweh and of Yahweh Shai, our Lord. So us knowing about Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, um, that's how we're going to get all these things. Not through money, not through riches, not through these American churches, the worldly churches, not through Islam, not through vocab and then um, Calvinism. All right, we get it through Yahweh and his son Yahweh shot. It says, um, according as his divine power have given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. All right, things that pertain unto death, he didn't give that to us. Things that pertain unto life and godliness. All right. <clears throat> this is life to bestow gratuitously all right to present bestow um what was that it says all right and uh, godliness it says piety especially the, especially the gospel scheme reverence respect piety towards Yahweh, godliness and that's godliness, man. Basically, uh, reverencing the Most High. Not just saying I'm keeping the laws, but serving the Most High. You know? Turning to Him, praying to Him. Doing His, doing His will. Through the knowledge of Him that have called us to the glory and virtue. So the Lord is calling us to be glorified. <laughs> And, and to have virtue, what's that? To be manly. All right, to be men. Because other than that, he called them, what? Brute beasts. Nat natural brute beasts, meaning final, following following the carnal instead of the, the spirit of truth. All right. So it says, what? We have been called to glory. And who is that given to? So it's glory in a wide application. All right, so um, this is a most glorious condition, most exalted state of the angels. Wow, man. Splendor, brightness, to be glorified. This is Romans 9 and um, 4. It says, who are Israel? Well, 3. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Yahweh Shai for my brethren. My kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption and the glory. So the adoption meaning being brought back to Yahweh, you're right, reverencing him. Um, and he says, what? The, the, and the glory pertains to Israel and the covenants and the giving of the law. So you had first, second, first and second covenants. Those are given to Israelites, not to the nations. And the giving of the law, and the law was given to Israel, and we're the only ones that can give it. And the service of Yahweh, teaching his truth, and also um, the altar, dealing with the altar. And the promises, man, the promise was given to who? From Abraham, really to Jacob, all right? Abraham through Isaac. To Jacob, <clears throat> whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Yahweh Shai came, who is over all, God bless forever. So Yahweh Shai is over every nation, but he came to die for his people and to live for his people, the elect of Israel, or the children of Israel. All right. All right, so first, Second Peter's one and one, and it says, um, or one and three, <clears throat> according according as his divine power, all right, spiritual power, have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, right? Because we've been given the gift of life, 
the power of a life, and Esau had been given the power of a death. A big difference. Since through the knowledge of him that have called us to the glory and the virtue, all right, the virtue meaning what? To be manly. To, to be a man in this truth. A man of Yahweh. So that, that again shows you who his, his voice is to. Uh, first it says what? Manliness. Valor. Excellence. A virtuous course of thought, feeling, and action. Moral goodness. All right. Any particular moral excellence as modesty, purity. So that's to be have virtue. And that's what we've been called to. Instead of being what? <clears throat> uh, uh, Jacob supplanters, we were called uh, Yasha Allah now, the princes of the Most High. It says, what, verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. So just like this truth is precious, the promises that are given to us are precious. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, right, through these bodies. Um, you have what? Lust. And now the Lord said, take on the divine nature instead of the carnal nature. It says, God-like. All right. Spoken of the only and true Yahweh, um, a general name, basically saying Theos, okay? God like. It says here, it says, um, all right, precious promises. Having escaped the world, escaped the corruption that is in the world. Through lust, man. Okay, and that's how the world gets gets our people, man. Through the lust, Esau put it out there through the media, and through the stores, and um, and in the ghettos, the drugs, the the jails, the money. You know, the cars and the clothes, the hoes. Right, basically, what the pursuit of happiness, the success that they have in the society. <clears throat> And you know, um, sin. All right, adultery. So, uh, it says the world through lust. The word lust is a longing, a desire, craving something. Longing, desire for what is forbidden. For what is forbidden, man. So, all right. So the Lord said we're going to escape the corruption of the world that is in the world through lust, man. All right. This is Micah 2 and 10. Arise ye and depart. That means arise from being asleep and dead. All right. Arise. Come come to life in the divine spirit of Yahweh Hashem Shai. And depart. How do we depart? Meaning pull away from this this world. For this is not your rest. Because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with the sore destruction. So if, if we have to what, control our desires in this world. Because it ultimately leads us to destruction. All right. Uh, Second Peter 1 and 1. I mean 1 and 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through the lust all right and if we escape and then we return back to it you know um second peter's 2 and uh, 20 for after that for after for, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, see, that's how we escape the pollutions of the world, 
through the knowledge of Yahweh by Shem and through the laws as well. They are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. All right. So now let's move on. Uh, I ran out of battery, so I'm just trying to uh, wrap this up. Um, Second Peter 1 and 5. All right. Well, 4 is to get to the point again. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by, and the promises were given to Jacob. All right. And I read that. To whom pertain the glory and the promises. That's Psalm, uh, Romans 9, chapter 9. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, right? Um, being connected in the spirit. While the whole world is in darkness and lust, you'll be, we'll be connected in the spirit and have peace with Yahweh Bashim Shah. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. All right, only way we escape that is through Yahweh Shai, the knowledge of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And to knowledge, it's like, where was that? Okay, verse 5. Hopefully my battery don't cut off. Um, let me see. All right, it says, and to, so basically, all right, and add to your faith. Um, virtue. All right, and besides this, giving all diligence, and diligence is what once we come into this truth, we move quick. That's why you see brothers uploading so many videos and and, and studying. It says move with speed, dispatch, eagerness, haste. We're supposed to be doing haste in the day, and it shows you what that means. Hastening the day is what? Doing this work. All right. So we add speed into our work and our and our prayer and our knowledge of Yahweh Hashem Shai. And seeking him ten times more. Um, so we the and, and each person is gonna um, you know take on these attributes, spiritual attributes, you know, and um not in the same order. Some person might get the knowledge first. Some person might get the virtue. Some person might get the temperance first, you know. So you got to see where you're at on your level, you know, with things you need to work on, all of us, whether in the truth or out of the truth. Once you come into the truth, this is what you have to take on. Being in the truth, this is what we have to remind ourselves. All right. So... Verse 5, and besides this, giving all diligence, meaning all speed and hastening in every way, add to your faith virtue. So add it to our faith. Okay. So it says add to our faith virtue, all right, manliness and, and Basically, keeping the laws to the best of your ability, you know, in reverence towards Yahweh, you know what I mean, in prayer. So, in the in that in that hastening, let that hastening be towards Yahweh, you know, and reverencing Him first, and then, you know, we say, um, this is Hebrews eleven. And six, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All right, so we got to believe. That's the point. At a certain stage, when you you begin to speed up and study, doing you know doing your lessons, well, you got to acknowledge the Father first. All right, and diligently seek him. Through much study, uh, studying to show ourselves approved, 
a workman that should not be ashamed, eating the whole roll. All right, so I got about 3% on my phone. Let me keep going real quick. Uh, verse 5, 2 Peter 1 and 5. And besides this, giving all diligence, all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge. All right, what's knowledge? Knowledge is the knowledge of Yahweh and the knowledge of his laws, okay, and his ways. Uh, knowledge, the act. So you begin to act it out. The know-how, all right? Especially of things lawful and unlawful for Christians, but we're not Christians. It's talking about the elect, all right, of Israel. So basically it says the general knowledge of our religion. It is not a religion, so of our belief, it should be called. So having general knowledge and also uh, what's lawful and unlawful for us. So that's having the knowledge. All right. And to knowledge, temperance. So once you have the know how and you understand the laws and, you know, and the most high, what he's requiring of us, you add what? Self control. The virtue of one who masters his desires and passions. Especially his sensual appetites, with the eye, with the eyes, nose, ears, taste, feeling. You have to master all of those. You can look at those like five enemies that you got to conquer in this life, and you know, spirit against those five things. All right, those warriors, five warriors that war against the soul. Which would be your eyes, right? In a world full of uh, wickedness, uh, smell, you know, and something that tastes good, something that feels good. You know, if it's wicked, we put we gotta stay away from it. Um, so we add what temperance, which means what temper, self control, and then the self control. You add patience, all right? We add patience, man. And patience is a moving uh, um, act, just like faith is. These are all moving, uh, organic uh, terminologies. So to to have patience means to be cheerful or hopeful, endurance, constancy. Constancy, man. So he said, "What? Second, Second Timothy two and three. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai. All right. So endure the hardness. That's going to happen. You being in this truth, it hardens your spirit against this world. All right. Builds callous. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him." Who have chosen him to be a soldier. So that's our point, to please the Father and to please Yahweh Shai that have called us out of the world. All right. And that's, so we endure the hardening um, of our spirits. All right. <clears throat> Being in this truth, man, it hardens you, man. And what's that? Endurance means to be patience. Patient. All right. So it says um, patience. I'm going to go quick. My battery is on 2% now. And to, it says, and to patience, godliness, man. All right. So that long suffering, and we keep pushing and doing this work and enduring. It says uh, to add godliness to that. Yeah. Now what's that? It says godliness, uh, reverence towards Yahweh. You know, godliness, man. Basically saying, uh, representing Yahweh by Shemel Shai in, in this work upon the earth. So we reverence the Lord and we, we serve our people for Yahweh by Shemel Shai. And to godliness, 
brotherly kindness. They got that brotherly kindness, being brotherly towards one another, uh, keeping the laws towards one another. All right. See, that's that kindness. It says fraternal, fraternal affection. That's why I said brotherly kindness. So, who is the Lord? Who is our brothers? Uh, besides those that those that do the will of Yahweh, who is our sister? Those that do the will of Yahweh. All right, so we show that kindness towards them, brotherly love. All right, cherish for each other as brethren. And the word is Philadelphia. All right, that's why they call Philly the city of brotherly love. When it's really the city of brotherly hate. Verse 6. Well, um, so we had godliness and kindness. All right, brotherly love. And to brotherly kindness, charity. All right, so you, you know, basically building a camp, you know, becoming brothers. And then with that, you do the work. You start to what? It says love, affection, or benevolence, especially a love feast, brotherly love. And that's that's the love doing this work. All right, First John 5 and 1. Whosoever believeth that Yahweh Shai is the Mashiach is born of Yahweh. So we become his sons and daughters. If you believe and everyone that loves him, see, reverence the most high, and that begat, uh, it's like it. and everyone that loveth him that begat, talking about Yahweh, loveth him also that is begotten of him. So if you love the Father, you love the Son. If you love the Son, if you love his, his, uh, his people, then you love Yahweh Shah. By this we know that we love the children of Yahweh when we love Yahweh and keep his commandments. See that? That's what everything we just read. Reverencing the Lord, reverencing kindness towards his people. Kindness towards his people, his elect, is kindness towards Yahweh. Doing his work. You see that? Um, for this is the love of Yahweh that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of Yahweh overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Yahweh Shai is the Son of God. All right, so all the believers, those the ones that we what we reverence and we show our, our kindness towards. All right, verse seven and to godliness. Brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness, charity. All right, so charity. Charity is what? Basically the work. Feeding the sheep, man, the love feast, all right? It says agape, love, so uh, just feeding the sheep. You become a worker. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. All right? So, you know, these virtues, all right, basically the seven virtues, um, if we keep these things, they make us complete. All right? But he that lacketh these, these things is blind, man. So you claim to be in this truth, you're still blind if you lack any of these. Their brotherly kindness, you know, all these things, man. Virtue, right, godliness, charity, patience, temperance, right, knowledge, you know, the laws. But he that lack of these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins, you know. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence. So do the opposite and give diligence. And that's what we're going to move quickly. 
to make your calling and election sure. So, so we got to fight for this, man, to make our calling, you know, to be called and to be elected, to be chosen. Make that a, a sure bet, man. All right. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. I'm going to say, so the Lord said, this is the, that's, that's the ministering. That's the path to the kingdom. That's the yellow brick road that we follow, that lead us right into the kingdom, man. All right? Us ministering each other and being ministered to. In this way, though. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Though ye know them, see, even if you think you know it, you still got to be put in remembrance. And be established in the present truth. All right? So I'm going to read that again. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Though ye know them. And be established in the present truth. All right? So we have to remind ourselves of these virtues. You know, so with that, I'm going to say, uh, you know, Shalom.